I'm Elizabeth, just your average housewife living in a pretty standard life. As I near my 60s, my husband Christopher, who's a bit older, has shifted from full-time work to freelance gigs, and we're enjoying our laid-back days together. Our only son, Daniel, got married last year. At the request of his wife Stephanie, they didn't have a wedding ceremony, but they did take wedding photos in Italy, it seems. The two of them smiling happily against a backdrop of the clear blue sky and ocean. We couldn't help but laugh at how radiant they looked, which earned us a glare from our son. We're happy as long as they're happy, no matter the circumstances. The couple met far away in Stephanie's hometown and have settled there due to her commitments. Although it's not an easy drive, they usually come home for Christmas and Independence Day. And so, Independence Day has arrived once again, with our son and his wife coming home. We're home! Hello, mother-in-law. Long time no see. Thank you for coming all this way. Come in, come in. I lead Stephanie, who still seems a bit tense, into the living room. We catch up over some key lime pie I prepared for this occasion, and the conversation is lively. Well, mostly it's me doing the talking. You're too excited, Mom. Daniel says, rolling his eyes. Next to him, Stephanie smiles and nods along. Oh my, look at the time. I'll go start dinner. Stephanie, you can relax. No, please let me help. With that, Stephanie puts on the apron she brought and follows me into the kitchen. It felt odd to decline her offer, so I leave her in charge of making the soup. As we cook side by side, chatting away, I feel somewhat bashful. This is a first for me. It's so wonderful. I've always dreamed of standing in a kitchen with a daughter. Daniel was never interested in cooking. Oh, sorry. You're just being polite. Not at all. I'm thrilled to be cooking with you, mother-in-law. Stephanie, could you teach me how to make something Daniel likes? He told me, why not learn from mom? She's a great cook. Despite my faux pas, Stephanie kindly covers for me. What a wonderful daughter-in-law my son has found. Daniel, you've never said anything like that at home, have you? As she sat with her husband in the living room, she made sure Daniel could hear. Daniel chuckled. Well, it's embarrassing, you know. <laughs> Daniel, an easygoing guy, and Stephanie, a calm soul. I knew they built a lovely home together. I wanted to do everything I could to help them. It was just a given. That's a parent's role, right? But I realized not all parents are like that. Stephanie, you look pale. Your bed is made, why don't you rest? No, please let me help. We were concerned about Stephanie's pale face from the moment we picked her up for Christmas. Don't push yourself. You look thinner than when we saw you last summer. Are you eating? Well, about that. Stephanie hesitated, but stubbornly moved toward the kitchen. Her husband chimed in. Elizabeth can handle it. You should rest. Okay, sorry. Finally, she reluctantly left the kitchen. Throughout the visit, we advised her to go home early because she was unwell, but still willing to help. Stephanie seemed like she wanted to say something, but Daniel nudged her and they left. Watching their car drive away, we sighed. She looks like she was struggling but still wanted to work. She could lean on us more. She probably hasn't had the chance to rely on anyone. Why Stephanie refused a wedding ceremony? It was her relationship with her biological mother. Apparently, Stephanie grew up without a father, raised by a mother. She more interested in gambling and smoking than in parenting. So, Stephanie's maternal grandmother took care of her, 
teaching her all the household chores. She passed away before Stephanie went to high school. Stephanie has been working part-time to afford her tuition at an alternative high school. She's a dedicated, hard-working woman. And until their marriage, her mother had been taking most of Stephanie's earnings. Daniel told us, clenching his jaw. So, Dad, Mom, if you see Stephanie struggling, please help her. I remember the night we first met Stephanie before their marriage, when Daniel earnestly asked this of us for the first time. It was moving to see our son, who had lived life at his own pace, had finally grown up enough to have someone to protect, and it was wonderful to know that he trusted us. Two weeks after Christmas, I usually avoid calling Stephanie unless it's necessary. I'm a chatterbox and Stephanie tends to overthink interactions with people. Keeping a bit of distance works best for both a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law. When I first got married, we lived with my mother-in-law, and we didn't get along at all. My husband eventually decided we should live separately. Once we did, we saw less of each other's irritating habits and managed to maintain a cordial relationship. I don't think she's a bad person after all. So when Daniel said, Help her out if she seems to be struggling, I was torn about how involved I should get. But I just couldn't shake the memory of her pale face on Christmas. I'll just check on on her, then hang up quickly. I convinced myself and pick up the phone. After several long rings, she picks up. Mother-in-law? Hey, how are you feeling, Stephanie? Did you see a doctor? Sorry for prying, but I've been really worried. I nervously ramble on, trying to hide my guilt. There's silence on the other end. Ah, uh, sorry, I tend to ramble on selfishly. Help me. What? Mother-in-law, please help me. Her voice is desperate. I instantly realize the gravity of the situation. What's wrong? Are you feeling ill? Where's Daniel? Daniel is on a business trip. Understood. I'll be a little while, but hang tight. I'm definitely coming. I hang up without asking any more questions and check the time. It's just before noon. If I catch the train now, I should be there in about two hours. I leave a quick scribble note for my husband, grab my wallet and phone, and rush out of the house. Stephanie! Mother-in-law! Stephanie was slumped on the couch in a room as cold as outside. You don't seem to have a fever. Did you go to the hospital? I'm sorry. No need to apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stephanie? To snap her back to reality, I warm the room and decide to make some cocoa. The fridge is empty, so I can only make rice porridge. What I had to force out of her hesitating lips was about her strained relationship with her mother. Stephanie's mother had always opposed our marriage. Probably didn't want to lose a daughter who took care of her and gave her money. So she agreed to back off on the condition that she would financially help us until we had children. Turns out Stephanie was suffering from morning sickness on Christmas. After the new year, she was led to an OBGYN during a hospital visit where they confirmed a heartbeat from the fetus. Her morning sickness is severe, and she has even had her work hours reduced. Daniel wanted to cancel his business trip, but Stephanie insisted he go, citing it as important. Then her mother showed up, demanding money. Seeing Stephanie's pale face, she quickly discerned the pregnancy and yelled, You are not allowed to have this baby! Upset that her usually submissive daughter wasn't agreeing, she took all the money and food in the house and left. As Stephanie recounted this calmly, I broke into tears. How could someone do this to her own daughter and grandchild? Mother-in-law. Seeing me cry, Stephanie's emotionless face twisted with guilt. It was heartbreaking to see her, a woman who didn't even know how to cry in pain. 
Stephanie, be honest. What do you want to do? If it's all right, I want to have this child, even if it's a burden on you and the family. Burden? When your child's life is at stake? I gently touched her still flat belly. I'll protect you and your mom. I swear. That night, I told Daniel about today's events over the phone and made a suggestion. I sensed tears in his voice when he said, "Thanks, mom." Christopher also immediately gave the go ahead. I'm truly grateful for a husband who understands my resolute nature. In the bedroom, I watch Stephanie's face as she sleeps, cradling her stomach. Grandma will do her best, okay? Feeling a sense of resolve, I too went to bed to prepare for the challenges of tomorrow. The next day, as Stephanie and I were having lunch, the doorbell rang. I left Stephanie, who was frozen in front of the monitor, and answered the door. Stephanie, that money isn't enough. When your husband comes home, make sure to get more from him. I stood in the way of Stephanie's mother. Who was trying to barge in while spewing vile words without even looking at me? Realizing something was off, she finally looked up. A stranger, an older woman, met her gaze, which was filled with surprise. Hello, I'm Daniel's mother. I apologize for the delayed introduction. Oh, uh, hi. Caught off guard, she's stunned as I make the first move. It seems we're going to become grandparents. What? Well, I mean, aren't we all a bit too young for that? She looks at us with an ingratiating and sticky gaze. Stephanie never knew how to act spoiled, but it seems this woman had lived her life doing just that. Age doesn't matter when you're married. How old were you when you had Stephanie? Eighteen. Well, you are much younger than Stephanie is now. She'll be just fine. I had her young, and it was hard. I don't want my daughter to struggle. You've certainly had a hard time, but don't worry. Daniel's here, and we're also here for Stephanie. What the hell? Frustrated that her feelings aren't understood, Stephanie's mother screams like a child. Stephanie, frightened by the outburst, also lets out a small scream from behind. So you're telling me that my daughter, who I raised single-handedly through struggles, won't give me money because she's married and pregnant? That's ridiculous. The one who's ridiculous is you. I firmly reject this incredibly selfish person, giving her no room to cling to me. Children are not born to serve their parents. They're born to live happily as individuals. Besides, your struggles stem from your lack of self-control and reckless spending. I can do whatever I want with my daughter. Then give your daughter to us. Suddenly, the bedroom door opens and my reserved husband appears. The unexpected arrival of a second person changes the color of Stephanie's mother's face. And the entrance of this somewhat intimidating older man has diminished her bravado a bit. Ignoring her changing expression, my husband takes out a thick envelope from his bag. I had set aside fifty thousand dollars for my son's wedding. I'll offer it for your daughter. Fifty thousand dollars? She was visibly thrilled by the sum, a sum she was not accustomed to. Um. Well, I've spent more on raising my daughter. Actually, it was infuriating to watch her try to negotiate for more money rather than say her daughter couldn't be bought. That amount has probably already been paid back by your daughter, hasn't it? She seems quite self-sufficient. If you don't need it, we can call the deal off. Well, fine then. It's for my daughter and my grandchild. She snatched the envelope from my husband. Her daughter was nowhere in her gaze anymore. Let's go, Stephanie. Okay. To spare Stephanie from any more ugliness, I took her outside. But she stopped at the front door, turning to say, "Thank you for everything, Mom. Goodbye." She would soon realize what she had lost 
for such a small amount. But by then, Stephanie and her child had enough time to escape. One year later, Christmas used to be the time we waited for our son to come home. Not this year, because we have our wonderful daughter Stephanie and granddaughter Ashley here with us. Thanks for watching Ashley, mother-in-law. She slept like an angel. Did you get what you needed? Yes. Oh, I got some donuts, too. How thoughtful of you. Come, sit by the fireplace. Sure. Stephanie settles in next to the fireplace, as if she's always been part of our home. You see, Stephanie and her family are living with us. When Daniel, my son, couldn't leave his job abroad, we decided Stephanie and Ashley could stay with us to be safe. Daniel had always planned on transferring back here, and just before Ashley was born, that wish came true. They could have moved out when Daniel arrived, but Stephanie wanted to live with us, so they still do. We thought there might be friction living together, but so far it's been delightful. In fact, it's brought so much life to our remaining years that heads otherwise seem set for monotony. While enjoying some delicious donuts, my husband popped in. Elizabeth, another email came through. Oh my, what does it say this time? Please give Stephanie and my grandchild back. Stephanie is my precious daughter. Since she left, it's like the fire in my heart has gone out. I have no money. If you won't return my daughter, give me money. You'll be in trouble too if something happens to me. My husband sighed in disbelief. She writes the same pitiful stuff every time. Oh, come on, Christopher. As I chuckled at his comment, Stephanie furrowed her brows and laughed awkwardly. Turns out, Stephanie's mom squandered the $50,000 she got in exchange for her daughter in no time. And so, we get these tragic soliloquies about her pitiful state. Hey, it's like we just changed who we're supporting. We wanted another child but couldn't have one. We got a lovely daughter for just $50,000. It's a bargain. You're too kind, mother-in-law. Stephanie replied with a face on the brink of tears. Don't worry about the money. Elizabeth and I really feel this way. Ah, uh, Christopher, you're cool. As I teased him, he lightly hit me with the newspaper he was holding. I'm glad I married Daniel. I'm happy I met you and father-in-law. How fortunate. I'm happy too. Getting such a wonderful daughter is the best thing our son has ever done. Hey, am I being neglected here? You know I'm here too, right? Daniel pouted, and the grandchild in Stephanie's arms yawned a little. We both chuckled at the sight. Even my husband, tipping his coffee cup, seemed delighted. Another peaceful day passes with our wonderful daughter. Something truly invaluable that money can't buy. That mother who ruins such tender moments is foolish. Instead of meaningless money... She should have valued the warm hand beside her. I sympathize with her for not knowing what it means to be happy as a mother, but I can't forgive her. However, I'm grateful she gave me a wonderful daughter like Stephanie. Shall we have mac and cheese for dinner tonight? I'll help you, mother-in-law. Thank you, Stephanie, as always. That's how it became completely normal for us to stand side by side in the kitchen, savoring our small happiness.